In this video, we are going to start creating our equipable item SO and we are going to add item parameters so that we can define durability, for example, to define our sword. We are going to start coding the logic before in the next video we are going to uh, test our logic. Okay, let's get going. In one of the previous videos, we have already created our equipable item SO. Let's open it up now. Okay. Let's delete the start and update. I'm going to extend the item SO. And again, we need to put this into a namespace. So let's right click on the equipable item, quick uh, actions, move to namespace, and we should have inventory model. Okay. Okay. Now we need to also add here. So implement our I destroy, uh, destroyable item and I item action interfaces because we know that uh, another type of actions that we want to have in our game is the equip item that's why our item is called equipable we need to right click on this item uh, i item actions quick actions and implement this interface and we are going to say that uh, our string action name will be this time equipable or equip because basically that's what we want to tell uh, or we want to write on the button that we want to show Again, we need to add to the action SFX audio clip. We're going to add get and private set. And this will be for us a way to set the sound effect for our action. Now, before we can implement our perform action method, we need to extend our item SO. So let's uh, go to the uh, to Unity. And we are going to have item modifiers but those are modifiers that we are going to use to modify the stats. So maybe let's rename this folder to be stats modifiers. And we want to create another folder inside our model folder. Right click, create another folder. Let's call this item parameters. Now, the idea here is that our sword, for example, may have dur uh, durability that we want to modify when we f use the sword or equip it or whatever we want to do. We may want each sword to have this unique parameter that will define that this sword is better than the other one because it has the higher durability. So again, to make it a bit generic, we are going to create uh, a new scriptable object. So let's create a new script. We're going to call it item parameter SO. And let's open this script up. Great. We are going to delete the start and update. We are going to extend scriptable object. And we are going to, of course, move it. Or actually, yeah, we can move it to namespace. So quick action, move to namespace, inventory add, uh, dot model. And we are going to create create asset menu attribute above to create it through the uh, create menu in the inspector. Now, one field that we want to have here is field serial as field public string so this is a property parameter name get private set now i do not like using strings to define the type of a parameter but this is a, a way to create a very generic parameter because if we give it a name inside the scriptable object then we only have one parameter of this type if we have only one name that we can be fairly sure and one uh, scriptable object reference, then if we provide a scriptable object reference, we can be sure that the parameter name will match and we can compare this if this is durability parameter. Okay, let's go back to Unity. Let's go to our data folder. Let's right click create a folder. Let's call it parameters. And we are going to right click create a new inventory parameter. Let's call it durability parameter. All we need to do here is type the parameter name. Let's call it durability. And this way we are going to know what type of parameter is it. Now again, this is only for the sake of creating the description for our item, because we need to pass this as well as the value inside the description of the parameter. But otherwise, we could use simply the scriptable object name to distinguish or actually the idea of it to distinguish what type of parameter is it. This was shown in uh, uh, one of the Unity videos as uh, instead of enums, we are going to use scriptable objects to create those parameters so that we do not have to ex uh, change the code behind the enum. Instead, we simply need to create a new scriptable object reference to define a new parameter. 
With that done, we need to go back to our model and to our equipable item SO, our, our actually to our item SO. So let's open our item SO script. And generally, this is something that we uh, want to be prepared for because our item SO was meant to have all the data about the items. And this time we need to also add another type of data, field serialized field, public list, item parameter, default parameters list with a getter and setter. Now, this list will contain item parameter. This is the same thing as we did beforehand with our edible item. We can't store our references to the items inside our modifiers data list in our edible item because we also need to have the value that we want to use to modify this parameter with. And the same thing will happen in our item SO. We need to have another struct or a class that will define the value of this parameter. This time we are going to create a struct. So I'm going to paste the code. We're going to have a public struct item parameter. And we need to add serializable to show it inside the inspector. So right click here, quick actions and say using system. Now system namespace also contains I equitable uh, interface that allows us to implement equ equals operation that is used by lists and dictionaries and other collections to compare to items. Now I want to be able to compare item parameter to another item parameter to know if this is the same parameter or not. For example, to reduce this value. So we are going to have a public item parameter SO reference item parameter and a public float value to define this parameter. And we need to use this I equipable so right click quick actions and use uh, implement this interface. And this will have public bool equals that takes in into item parameter other. So I just want to check if other item parameter is equal to the same item parameter that we have here. So if we have this struct, we can have a list of default parameters inside our item SO. Now the problem is that now uh, to add unique items, we need to include it inside our inventory system as well as inside our uh, interfaces. Now let's go back to our edible item SO because right now our I item action takes in only the game object reference but basically we want it to also take in a list of item parameters item state and this is because we need to make our item action uh, reusable across multiple actions and sometimes we need to include also those parameters and that's exactly what we are going to use when we implement our equipable item for now let's slide up because our item uh, our edible item does not include this list so we are going to select our perform action i'm going to again paste the list of item parameters item state and i'm going to set it to be equal to null just for the sake of making our code work that we already have our uh, edible item will not uh, care about item parameters but of course we can include this when we want to for example uh, boost the health of our a player but the item is a bit rotten so this durability of an of an apple is 50 percent then we may want to include this in our how much health does it restores for uh, this will be important for our equipable item so so let's select this script and let's open it up and now we can of course add here again item a list of item parameters item state equals null in our definition of the perform action now, before we can implement this method, we need to still update our inventory to store the item state of each item, because if we have the durability of a sword, we need to store this value inside our inventory. So let's save, uh, actually let's file and save all, so now we should not have any errors in our code, let's go back to Unity just to verify it. Okay, let me find uh, what is going on here. And apparently we can set the null value to the item, the, the perform action call to the infra interface does not really care about this. So we can pass here the null value for, uh, for now. And this now should be good. So let's go back to Unity. And we are going to see now that we should not have any errors. This is important because our compilation should be able to check uh, about our new changes that we are going to make to our inventory model. So let's open up our inventory SO. Great. If you recall, we were using inventory item 
uh, struct to store our item so let's right click on it go to the definition and here of course we need to include the state of an of our item so let's create a public list of item parameter item state now this means that change quantity needs to copy this list so we are going to call item state equals new again uh, keep in mind that item parameters are struct uh, because we do not want to easily be able to modify those so we're going to create a new list of item parameters and we are going to basically copy this dot item state to store the same values in a new list so this list is separate from the old list in our inventory item and this will be just to change the quantity we need to copy this list to the new item now for safety in our get empty item we should also set the item state equals new list of item parameters and this is because a list default value is null but for our inventory item we of course want to have this as an empty list so that we can pass it to another method so of course we should find our add item method and we need to include this list here so we may want to pass here the item that has a list of parameters that is different than an null. So this is not a new item. This is an old item that has some specific state. So we're going to add an, as an argument to our add item list of item parameters item state. Again, we are going to initialize it to null so that our previously implemented code works so that we do not have to change this reference in every script that we have used it already. Now basically our state of an item will only be uh, used by our add item to first uh, free slot because for the stackable items we cannot really store the state although we could but this would be a lot of work so I do not want to do this but I want to pass as the reference to our add item to first free slot the item state Let's right click on this add item to first slot and go to the definition and this doesn't take this list. So again we need to add here the reference to this list. So this will be list of item parameter item state equals null. This way we can again avoid modifying this although we have only two references. Basically what we will need to do here is add inside the definition of the item. We're going to define our item to contain a new list. Of item parameters and if the item state is null we are going to return item default parameters list so this is defined in our item so else we are going to use this item state if this is not empty and we are going to create a new list of item parameters just to copy the structs into our new list okay and for the most part this is the only change that we need to make to our inventory so to take care of assigning this item parameter uh, to our item Okay, let's again file and save all and we are going to go back to Unity. Great, no errors. So last thing that I want to do in this video is reopen our inventory controller and I want to include the parameters from the list inside the description of our item. So, so far we have assigned this uh, on description request that handle description request that go to the definition and we are going to see that we take the description from the item directly. Instead of this, we are going to create a new method, public string prepare description that will take in inventory item, inventory item. And this will use a string builder. So right click on this string builder quick actions and say using system.text. String builder is just a way to more efficiently create strings. We're going to create it as a new string builder. We're going to do a string builder. So sb.append inventory item item the description. So this will be the base description. We are going to use sb.append line to create a new line. And we are going to loop for int i equals zero, i less than inventory items, item state dot count. So all the item states, i plus plus. And we are going to use the uh, string builder append. We are going to use this uh, dollar sign to ensure that we can pass parameters to our string. We are going to open this uh, quotation marks to define a string. And we are going to use those parentheses to create inventory item, item state of index i, item parameter, a parameter name. So we are getting here the name of the parameter. We're going to add to it again through the dollar sign. We're going to open parentheses, add the colon sign, and we're going to pass inventory item, item state of the element i dot value. So this will be the durability 
for of this specific item so this might be for example 50 we are going to add this division sign but this will be a string we are going to add to it and we are going to again use the dollar sign quotation marks and we are going to pass inventory item item default parameters list i value so for example durability default value is 100 but this item has the value 50 so what we are going to achieve is something like durability colon 50 divided by 100 so this will be just describing that durability is 50 uh, is 60 for from the available 100 points so this is what we are creating here for each item parameter so this is this for loop and we are going to return sb to string to create it as a string one more thing that we can add here is sb.append line after each parameter so that we basically create a, each description of each parameter on a new line now to use it we need to sign up to find handle description request and basically after we get the item so we are going to create string description equals prepare description and we are going to pass inventory item okay and when we update our description we are going to pass this description string instead of item description directly so now we have our stats assigned to this description as well okay since this video is getting quite long let's stop here let's save all the scripts and in the next video we are going to test our functionality see you in the next video